एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम we have already seen in part 1 of the video about band theory that how the energy of discrete electron doesn't remain discrete and multiple electrons collectively give rise to a band of energy and these bands can be of two types primarily one type of band of energy which is associated with the valence electron that is called as valence energy or valence band whereas another band of energy which is associated with the electrons when they are coming out or when they are becoming free it's called as conduction band so two distinct energy levels or two distinct distinct bands of energy are found in crystals or uh, molecules macromolecular structures with multiple atoms or multiple molecules such as ions now there is an important point to be understood that these two bands are not always equidistant or the gap between the valence band and conduction band is not same for all the materials different type of elements different type of complexes they can have different gaps across this conduction and valence band and that decides how conductive a material is Welcome to Ashan Academy my name is Aditya and you're watching engineering chemistry videos if you want to learn more about this topic you can refer this book from Ashan publishing you can find link for ebook in the description box below so let's have a glimpse at these things and uh, differentiate between conductor non conductor and semiconductor so this diagram might help you to clearly distinguish between insulator semiconductor and conductor what we see in case of insulator the valence band and conduction band is far away that means the energy gap between a conduction band and valence band is very high so if you have all the electrons in a lattice let's say we talk about a stone or we talk about diamond uh, which is isotope allotrope of carbon so in all these cases all the atoms will be well connected with each other they will have valence electrons and those valence electron will have a ba band of energy but the virtual band of conduction will have much higher energy so even if you try to raise the temperature if you try to heat that molecule or if you try to give energy by some means that amount of energy will not be sufficient to change these electrons or transfer these electrons from valence band to conduction band so in any case irrespective of what kind of method you try you will not be able to supply this energy and therefore those materials will always be insulating the electric current so if you have electric current connected to one end it will not be passing to another end because electrons in between are not leaving their atoms C conduction of current is only possible when electrons can leave their atoms whereas if you look at the case of good conductors or let me talk about metals so this gap is actually negligible in fact conduction band and valence band are overlapping in metals that means those electrons which are in valence shell without even giving energy at room temperature they are capable of le leaving the atoms so if they can leave the atoms that means two bands exist and even at room temperature electrons are present both in valence band and conduction band and you don't have to apply any energy you don't have to give any extra effort to make that material conduct electricity because when already there are free electrons present if you connect current at one end and connect a wire uh, connect a wire at another end it will automatically conduct electricity so metals they have overlapping conduction and valence band and therefore they are good conductors of electricity whereas there are certain materials which do not have a very large gap like insulators neither they have overlapping valence band and conduction band now since they do not have overlapping valence band and conduction band so normally they will not conduct electricity because there is no free electron in their system in their crystal or in their lattice 
there is no free electron which is capable of conducting your current so they will behave as bad conductors but there are certain means by which you can overcome this energy you can supply some energy to these materials and the electrons can start moving into conduction band so if you provide that energy electrons can now become free and they can start becoming conductive and if you keep on increasing that energy it is possible that their conductivity is also influenced and they can become more and more conductive as you change those conditions so such materials are called as semiconductors you might have heard about silicon germanium these are the atoms which fall in a group where, where the carbon a carbon occurs so if you look at the periodic table and see carbon in the same group you will find silicon as well it has got four electrons in its outermost shell but these four electrons are having making a valence band which is much closer to the conduction band so if you give little bit of energy these electrons ooze out from atoms but this will happen only in case of lattice this will not happen in case of an isolated atom or an isolated molecule this is the property of a lattice or a macromolecular structure so semiconductors can be transformed from insulator like molecules to conductor like molecules and that's why they have been named so now one more interesting thing apart from providing energy to semiconductors you can also do some modifications like you can disturb the basic lattice so suppose uh, there is a lattice or a crystal structure which is having so many atoms connected with each other let's say you have this kind of lattice and all the atoms are identical here or there are let us say two kind of uh, atoms here and this is kind of mostly homogeneous structure but what you do you change one or two atoms in this lattice so the phenomena of change in the basic structure basic lattice structure by introducing another element or you can say impurities is called as doping and when you do doping you are actually changing the energy bands or gap that that happens because of two reasons you can either create excess electrons in this lattice or you can create holes which are electron deficient centers and those centers facilitate the movement of electron across this so doping has been very very useful in bringing down better semiconductors or making uh, better semiconductors in fact uh, converting that silicon into a semiconductor into a proper semiconductor which is used in your laptops or in your digital devices requires an extensive effect effort like doping so the message is doping would change this energy gap and can enhance the abilities of a semiconductor to conduct electricity in a controllable manner so that is what uh, we have learned uh, you can you can also check here that how doping changes those things if you don't do doping then perhaps at zero kelvin it will not be possible to change or to transfer electrons from valence band to conduction band so zero kelvin is an absolute zero temperature which shows there is no molecular motion and everything is frozen no vibrations so that is something where you can practically realize the distinction between these two bands but at the realistic temperatures more realistic temperatures like 300 kelvin you will be able to see that electrons are moving from one part that is valence band to conduction band and this becomes apparent this becomes more frequent if you have already done doping if you have done doping in that case the transfer of electrons will become much faster and you can modulate the properties you can control those properties so formation of gates formation of chips and lot of other uh, semiconductor based devices which you call solid state devices is entirely dependent on understanding of this band theory so finally here we stop and i think you have enjoyed learning this part the complete series of videos which include engineering chemistry and talks about quantum mechanical model of atom includes the first part that is based on atomic structure shooting our equation then we have another two videos on molecular orbitals then we have two more videos on energy levels of molecular orbitals and then we have two videos on crystal field splitting and 
change in the properties of metals, especially D block metals, and these two videos which are related to band theory. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can refer this book from S. Chan Publishing. You can find link for ebook in the description box below. You can like, share, and subscribe the channel for continuous use and regular updates. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.